I'm Dr. Chris Moyes and I work for the Hepatitis Foundation. I've been working with Hepatitis B for 40 years, um, including a lot of the initial research and vaccine trials. And it's about Hepatitis B vaccination that I want to talk to you today. This is session three um, of the um, online education series from the Foundation. This is a diagram of the Hepatitis B virus. You will see it has a central core of protein and DNA and an outer envelope of Hepatitis B surface antigen. All Hepatitis B vaccines contain synthetically made surface antigen, which induces immunity to infection with the virus. This slide shows the reason why we recommend vaccination in children and for all infants. It's an example of a town in the Bay of Plenty where by the time they were 14 years of age, over two thirds of Maori children and over half of Europeans were naturally infected by the hepatitis B virus um, prior to the vaccination program. Of course, not all of them became chronic carriers or became sick, uh, but it indicates how common the infection was. We believe that most of them were infected during innocent play, um, most commonly by uh, a transmission through grazers and school sores and cuts but some would have been infected at birth by the mothers who carried the virus. And infection can also occur between adults, either from blood to blood or um, with sexual fluids. Active vaccination stimulates the body to produce immunogenic levels of anti-HBS. It confers immunity to hepatitis B virus in more than 95% of recipients. It prevents development of chronic hepatitis B and associated liver disease, and it reduces hepatitis B transmission rates. This slide shows how infant vaccination protects children against becoming carriers of the hepatitis B virus. Who should receive vaccine? Well, all infants, close contacts of infected persons if they're not already immune, and non-immune individuals at risk because of their lifestyle, such as injecting drug users or sex workers, or because of their occupation, for example, medical staff, police and ambulance personnel. What is in the vaccine? Well, all licensed vaccines have a synthetically produced version of the surface antigen, which is produced in yeast cells. They also contain an adjuvant, such as an aluminium salt, which is widely used in vaccines as it increases the response of the immune system. Modern vaccines do not have mercury salts in them to preserve them. How safe is the vaccine? Well, this slide shows that reported side effects in over 40,000 Alaskan recipients were rare and minor. And there were no cases of Guillain-Barre syndrome attributable to the vaccine. The first 20 years of vaccine use was summed up in this statement um, by Zuckerman. He said, over a thousand million doses of hepatitis B vaccine have been used with an outstanding record of safety. There is no evidence of an association between hepatitis B vaccines and the sudden infant death syndrome, chronic fatigue syndrome, or multiple sclerosis. How does immunity develop when you give vaccine? Well, usually three doses are given. Typically, the first dose induces a low teta of 
anti-surface antigen or anti-HBS um, in about two-thirds of cases, as you can see on the left-hand bar on this graph. The second dose achieves a response in almost all cases, with some increase in the theta of antibody, as shown by the blue line. The third dose acts as a booster with a very large increase in the theta of antibody. What about the timing of vaccination? Well, it can be compressed to two weekly intervals, though you don't get as high a, a theta of anti-HBS if you do that. The course can be extended indefinitely, so missed doses can be given any time and there's no need to start again. Two doses is enough in many children and young adults, but not infants. And once response is achieved, immunity far outlasts measurable antibody. For adults at high risk, for example health workers, we do suggest a check response after the last dose of vaccine. And if there is evidence of anti-HBS development, that means they have long-term immunity. The technique of vaccination must be intramuscular and not into fat. So we use the deltoid muscle in adults um, or older children. The thigh can be used in the neonate, providing it's not too fat. You must use a long enough needle to reach muscle and insert it perpendicular to the skin. Poor responders to vaccine occur um, particularly in older adults. Increasing age from the late 30s on is associated with an increasing rate of poor response. Obesity is also associated probably because the vaccine has been given into fat rather than muscle. Patients with chronic debilitating disease or who are on immunosuppressive therapy may also respond poorly. If the vaccine has not induced a response, um, you can do further things if the patient is at high risk of infection. Up to three additional doses of vaccine can be given um, or the use of a more concentrated uh, dose of vaccine which is usually about four times the normal concentration. If there's persistent failure to respond an individual should be regarded as still susceptible to infection and needs to take appropriate precautions that includes um, hepatitis immune globulin injection if they're exposed to needle stick injury from an, an infected person. Is there a need for revaccination? Well, vaccinees who responded to a primary course, which includes more than 95% of children, will eventually lose anti-HBS, but the immune memory lasts many more years and is protective. So it is not usually necessary to revaccinate anti-HBS negative individuals who are known to have had a full course of vaccine in childhood. An exception might be those who need to have evidence of immunity for their occupation. And in such cases, a single dose of extra vaccine is usually followed by a marked response within 10 to 14 days with development of anti-HBS. So to summarize, hepatitis B vaccine is a very safe and protective vaccine and it should be given to all infants and to older individuals um, who are at risk of infection.